welcome to the Daily Debate Live Thursdays with Taghreed Hussain here on Nile TV International. Uh, well, uh, tonight we'll be uh, uh, wrapping up more than one important story and taking uh, Egypt's steadfast, uh, important steps uh, on the path of uh, Egypt's chairmanship of the African Union. After the announcement of Egypt's chairmanship of the Union, uh, the Egyptian government had announced the main axis of priority working accordingly for the African continent, including more than one axis, namely economic integration, continental integration, economic and social uh, development, also institutional reform of the African Union, uh, also cooperation with the international uh, friends of the African continent and uh, above all of course peace and security of the uh, continent. Egypt started working on those axes since the beginning uh, of uh, 2019 under the leadership of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and exerted great efforts in that uh, respect and also in different uh, aspects, uh, namely also Egypt launching the campaign to detect and treat one million Africans of uh, virus C, providing African countries with assistance and with experience in presenting projects connecting electricity grids and also uh, working hand in hand with uh, many African countries was also important, following up on the presidency of the African Union and ensuring the uh, continuity of the different projects. So we'll be recapping more about those important steps, milestones in the Egyptian chairmanship of the African uh, Union. And I have all the honor and pleasure of having uh, with us on the daily debate uh, live uh, tonight. Uh, His Excellency Ambassador Dr. Mohamed Hagezi, a former assistant to the Foreign Minister, thank you so much for coming, Ambassador. My pleasure. Together we'll be reading uh, the news headlines and taking to the top stories the President received on Thursday Lebanon's Progressive Socialist Party, Walid Jumbalat, Presidential Spokesman Ambassador Bassam Radi said that the President hailed Egypt's strong and pol special relations with Lebanon and also the historic ties between the people of the two brotherly countries. The President also stressed on Egypt's keenness on the security and stability of Lebanon and praised Jumbalat's role in preserving the stability and balance uh, of the brotherly country. On, the, on his part, Jumbalat expressed keenness on boosting historic and strong bilateral relations with Egypt and uh, his appreciation to the Egyptian efforts in supporting Lebanon and the pivotal role as a cornerstone of stability in the region. Ambassador, an important meeting uh, with Mr. Willy Jambolat and uh, Egypt is always working on further strengthening ties with Lebanon. Indeed, and uh, I think it is a timely visit, uh, seeking uh, support uh, of a country that is always or historically supporting Lebanon uh, all over its history. And nowadays, as we all know, there is uh, a lot of tension around uh, Lebanon and surrounding its borders with Israel and Hezbollah. And uh, for that, I think part of this very important visit is to uh, uh, seek support from uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and from Egypt uh, to uh, soften a bit the uh, deteriorating uh, uh, security situation around their border and, uh, of course, the bilateral ties and the support we are giving to all the uh, parties uh, concerned in Lebanon. So I think this is a very important visit where Lebanon really needs the uh, diplomatic uh, support that a country like Egypt can give. Bilateral ties, as you have uh, stated, is very important indeed and I'm sure uh, that part of that uh, is related to the relation that historically exists with the National Progressive Party of uh, Kamal Jumbulat and Walid Jumbulat, uh, his son. And I'm sure that Walid Jumbulat uh, have brought uh, uh, all the concerns of the Lebanese uh, people about the current situation surrounding Lebanon and Israeli Hezbollah uh, relations. Yes, uh, uh, Egypt and Lebanon enjoy strategic ties, uh, bilateral relations throughout history between both countries. Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. I think since the inception of the independence of Lebanon, uh, Egypt was always supportive to Lebanon uh, security, uh, cohesion, 
and national unity. In addition to that, in the economic front, in all what is related to infrastructure, electricity, and other activities, Lebanon was always considering Egypt one of the pillars of its regional and Arab uh, relations. Yes, and Egypt is always keen on the security and the stability of Lebanon, and this has been outlined uh, by the president uh, during the meeting on the uh, other uh, side, Jumbalat expressed keenness on boosting those uh, historic and strong bilateral relations. The sense of coordination is very important, and it comes timely, as you've said. Uh, as, as I said, David, there is a security concern mm -hmm. around uh, Lebanon and uh, the uh, deteriorated situation with Hezbollah and Israel uh, requires all the parties concerned in Lebanon to exert efforts and to seek support from regional countries that enjoy credibility and respect in all domain. And Egypt, I think, have proven always to be a stabilizing factor and a support uh, to Lebanon all over its history. And I'm sure that uh, Egypt uh, will try to listen a little bit. The, the current tense situation and bring back peace and stability to the whole region. We don't need really to see an escalation where the Lebanese people and the institution will pay uh, uh, the price of confrontation between Hezbollah once again and Israel. Uh, definitely, and from uh, the Egyptian-Lebanese relations to Egypt's uh, relations with the African continent and uh, milestones throughout uh, the uh, start of 2019 and Egypt's chairmanship of the African Union. I, I, thank you, Tariq. Yes. Uh, Egypt was always supportive to its continent, uh, no matter whether it is in the chairmanship, but during the chairmanship, of the African Union 2019, uh, we uh, accelerated the efforts. But for two years, say for example, 2016, 2018, Egypt was uh, representing Africa in the Security Council, where all the African issues were transcended to the international community, were expressed uh, clearly by the Egyptian vocal uh, support to the African uh, issues, being it political or economic, in the also environmental debate in Paris. Egypt also spoke on behalf of Africa uh, in the uh, UNCTAD or in the group of 77 and China. Yes. Egypt was always speaking on behalf of the third world in general, the non-aligned and Africa. So uh, the chairmanship brought Egypt to decide on many issues and part of it was what you have stipulated in your uh, uh, intro where uh, all the activities that has been uh, really with us has proven successful and I may also add to what you have said the very important and historical achievement we had in Niamey in Niger uh, when we agreed on the FTA Africa the free trade intercontinental uh, uh, trade agreement where Africa has now representing itself as one of the most attractive free trade zone in the world and I'm sure that Egypt uh, will uh, do its best to uh, further enhance its trade ties with Africa using this very important platform. But uh, when we talked about uh, Egypt representing Africa, I think last week, uh, Egypt in the G7 or the UNCTAD, uh, sorry, or in TCAD. the TCAD 7, yes. uh, has uh, also carried with it uh, all the hopes and challenges of the continent to the international arena where uh, the president ha uh, w w has spoken clearly about the African uh, economic situation and hardships that require support from uh, uh, international community and our partners in all his bilateral meetings beside his very important inaugural speech has also raised the African issues and he spoke about African women, he spoke about African youth and he spoke about the injustice in the international economic front and the need to uh, bridge uh, the digital gap uh, as it is the key to progress, the key to sustainable development. He asked the international community and the mega players, the G7, uh, to uh, support Africa in reaching out with the international mm -hmm. Uh, community in the digital divide and I think uh, this was a very important call. Uh, the president followed this uh, very important participation in France in the G7 mm -hmm. uh, 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 in Tokyo uh, development uh, 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 uh,
Action Plan, uh, TICAD uh, 7, yeah. uh, and he represented Africa once again, and he called for an economic justice, a support uh, to the African continent in order to confront uh, the challenge of development, in order to confront terrorism and illegal immigration. We always need to enhance investments, to, inv to enhance opportunities to African youth in order not to fall into the trap of terrorism or not to seek uh, uh, another opportunity uh, uh, outside its country and moving into illegal immigration. So uh, the uh, two pillars that the president was always uh, uh, talked about in all his speeches or even bilateral talks is stability, mm -hmm. peace and security, besides of course economic and investment opportunities. Uh, above all also the president has spoken about Egypt in all this mm -hmm. uh, very important visit and yes. uh, raised the, uh, Egypt as uh, a, a, an investment opportunity after a very serious, difficult but successful economic reform program. Yes, a very important uh, gesture also concerning uh, the meetings that the president held on the sidelines of those important events and meeting with leaders and seeing eye to eye vis-a-vis uh, -vis the sense of coordination and also opening new doors for uh, investment. Uh, here, uh, as a flashback in uh, such important venues, the president was keen uh, to uh, present Africa's vision as a whole uh, before uh, the international community. Yeah, indeed, I did. Uh, the president always carries two uh, uh, important concerns, one uh, about uh, Africa and the second about Egypt. And he always uh, represents Africa truly in a way that uh, uh, gain respect and uh, of course the international community uh, also uh, uh, seek advice from a country that is keen to stabilize the region to find solution to African crisis. President al Fatah Sisi is playing an important role also in the uh, economic front but also in the uh, uh, silence of the guns initiative of the African Union where uh, uh, for confronting challenges requires stability and this stability will happen if we all uh, pulled our hands together in finding solution to the current crisis. For that he spoke uh, in depth uh, about Libya and uh, he uh, referred clearly to the interventions of the regional uh, powers that uh, caused the uh, matter in Libya to deteriorate and to continue uh, 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 unsolved up till now. And I'm sure that uh, the international community have taken note. Uh, I think Ghassan Salama, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, UN envoy, has uh, uh, clearly stated yesterday that uh, the uh, uh, armed embargo uh, to uh, Libya was not respected during the last uh, few months and I'm sure he refers uh, to what Turkey and a country like Qatar is doing in supporting um, mm -hmm. armed militia against the uh, Libyan army. Yes, uh, more about defending African causes and uh, how Egypt prioritized the different axes, namely development and peace and security, as you've mentioned, Ambassador. What else uh, concerning uh, this important file? And also there is uh, the sense of coordination vis-a-vis -vis combating terrorism, which is very important. Uh, bilateral uh, ties is important in mm. the agenda of the president. But as you have said, uh, 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 you have said, Tahrid, uh, the two pillars that has to be respected uh, uh, and to be shared with our international partners uh, is uh, the stabilizing the continent, solving the conflicts, uh, which will help a great deal in uh, uh, raising the economic uh, issues or challenges and confronting it in a way uh, that we all looking for. So the two pillars that President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi or the two sides of the coin is peace and stability and economic uh, development. Uh, both are interrelated and of course if uh, we are economically uh, helping Africa if we are helping Africa also in solving their problems in coordination with the African countries, not individually or uh, raising initiatives in the G7, for example, to certain problems without consulting African countries, that will not lead to a proper solution. What 
President Al-Fatah al-Sisi said, is that we need to be consulted in relations to issues pertaining to the continent and of course the economic uh, uh, and investment and trade with Africa requires uh, justice and mm -hmm. requires also to supply Africa uh, uh, with the uh, yeah. digital uh, divide. Or, or, or we can see here of course on yeah. the sidelines of the G7 and with uh, French President Francois Macron and also uh, the with, Kagame. yes and uh, with the UN Secretary General a very, um, Chancellor a very, Merkel yes a very rich uh, a gathering yeah. very important meetings um, this is the eye quality, to eye. yeah mm -hmm. this is the most important meeting where all uh, uh, policies of uh, peace and security uh, economic and strategic financing and uh, even uh, security mm -hmm. issues is uh, raised so it's important that Africa uh, really link with such an important gathering yeah and, and of course raising our issues in such a platform helps uh, our partners to directly support the continent and yes this is what Egypt always uh, working for Mm -hmm. uh, the UN Secretary General uh, met with the President on the sidelines and as we saw uh, that how they were seeing eye to eye and praised Egypt's efforts in fulfilling the, what he termed the African uh, agenda and uh, also the keenness to support African causes in cooperation with the African Union. So this sense of cooperation between the United Nations and the AU. Yes, Guterres is always uh, mm. raising the role of the African Union in solving African issues and mm -hmm. he's a great support uh, to the continent mm -hmm. and I think we'll have time uh, this month by the end of this month on the 24th upon the launching of the 74th session of the General Assembly yes. uh, to raise more issues Guterres and the international community in the General Assembly uh, where its agenda will focus on development, will focus as you referred to the one million African free of the uh, virus, virus C, C initiative mm -hmm. and they will uh, talk about uh, the health campaign and national, uh, national health insurance and they will talk about, of course, uh, the sustainable development in mm -hmm. a, uh, the most important meeting, which is the political debate in the General Assembly, I think on the 25th and 26th of uh, this month. I'm sure that the president will participate and he will definitely have uh, uh, time to uh, speak to uh, the 74th session as the sessions before. Mm -hmm. First to explain Egypt uh, success story uh, and Africa facing many challenges. This yes, is with the, the leaders, the leaders uh, mm -hmm. and their uh, photo setup. Photo setup yeah. with uh, mm -hmm. African leaders. Yes. Uh, this interaction is uh, important. And with President um, Trump and with President Trump. This is a recognition mm -hmm. of the importance of stabilizing Africa, Canada's working Trudeau. hand in hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, very, very important, important. To, to work hand in hand and this sense of reflection and uh, seeing eye to eye and meeting face to face definitely reflects positively on bilateral cooperation and the sense of coordination yeah. in the future. As uh, mm -hmm. Shinzo Abe uh, the mm -hmm. Prime Minister of Japan uh, was here, he and President Abdel Fattah Sisi co-hosted mm -hmm. that. And our seven, strong relations, yeah, of course, with, with Germany. Germany yes. Yes. Chancellor Merkel is mm -hmm. uh, a strategic partner to Egypt. Yes. And I'm sure uh, her statement that uh, mm -hmm. the success of Egypt is success This is the to meeting Europe, uh, yeah, where was, U.S. Uh, President Trump had uh, saluted the president and said that uh, through his wise leadership, a lot has been achieved in indeed. Egypt. Very yes. important statement indeed. And mm -hmm. I, I hope that uh, through this mutual respect, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi will bring to the attention of the American uh, administration the importance of respecting the uh, pillars of solving the Palestinian cause. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this is always uh, our case in regards to all the uh, bilateral uh, debates or bilateral talks we have either with President uh, President Trump or other leaders because this is a very important forum mm -hmm. where you can exchange all what is related to you, to your country or to your region, Palestine in particular, Iraq, Syria, Yemen and Libya, Sudan, mm -hmm. 
I think this is very important files uh, to be debated with uh, President Trump, and I'm sure that the bilateral ties, the strategic relations with the United States, always uh, uh, on top of the agenda. But in uh, the year of the Egyptian uh, presidency to the African Union, Africa is always present in all our bilateral talks. Uh, definitely, uh, Africa is always present in all our uh, bilateral talks and talking more about uh, Egypt's support to the Palestinian cause and, and also to the, to, to the Libyan uh, uh, side and uh, all our efforts in that respect uh, is very important in achieving uh, Arab unity. Let's have a short break and we'll be back. understood each other very well. He's a very tough man, I will tell you that, but he's also a good man, and he's done a fantastic job in Egypt. Not easy. In the meantime, Egypt has made tremendous progress under a great leader's leadership. That's what it's all about. And your staff also have gotten to know fantastic people. So I want to thank you, and I want to congratulate you. شراكتنا في إطار اتكاد حققت قدرا كبيرا من الإنجازات. وتفاعلت بالإيجاب مع المعطيات الدولية والإقليمية نجتمع تحت شعار النهوض بتنمية إفريقيا عبر الشعوب والتكنولوجيا والابتكار لأنني أتوجه باسم إفريقيا بدعوة لمؤسسات القطاع الخاص العالمية والشركات الدولية متعددة الجنسيات للاستثمار في قارتنا فأسواق إفريقيا مفتوحة والظروف الاستثمارية مهيئة وأيادينا ممدودة للتعاون وأراضينا غنية بالفرص والثروات وعزمنا على بناء مستقبل قارتنا في شتى المجالات لا يليد وأطالب مؤسسات التمويل الدولية والقرية والإقليمية بأن تطلع بدورها في تمويل التنمية بإفريقيا وتوفير الضمانات المالية لبناء قدرات القارة بما يسهم في تعزيز التجارة وزيادة الاستثمار So a very important roundup, and uh, this takes us also from the G7 and those important meetings and uh, the series also of meeting with leaders to the TCAT 7, which is also a very important opportunity for uh, talking Africa's development, sustainability, and doing business as well. I, I, indeed, it is mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. and doing business. I think mm -hmm. Africa was present in the G7 on the security and uh, developmental level, but in TCAT 7, it is about development, about supporting Africa. African economy about inviting all the stakeholders in relations to development, economic, finance, trade, uh, education, health, uh, uh, maybe uh, climate change as well, yes. all uh, empowering women, youth. All those uh, debates were uh, in uh, the TCAT 7. The president have given a very important uh, speech where he spoke uh, about African development, challenges that are facing the continent. Of course, security issues also is very important from a developmental dimension. And I think the Japanese government has proven once again that they are very uh, important partner, a strategic partner indeed to Africa, one of the oldest uh, who have expressed their support to Africa and in kind. And they are uh, really uh, and truly uh, very supportive in many domains, say in Egypt, for example, in education, uh, in culture, in the economic uh, yes, drive, in soft power. In soft power. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Japan is always uh, available to lend Africa uh, all what uh, 
uh, it has. And I'm sure that the inauguration of the Grand Egyptian Museum, which is mm -hmm. a landmark of the mutual cooperation between the two countries, uh, is another proof of uh, what really uh, we can gain from a strong Egyptian-Japanese uh, relationship that is due back uh, to centuries. Yes. Uh, ago, and I'm sure that Africa also uh, can count on Japan as a very reliable uh, partner. They have gathered like 400, uh, sorry, 4,800 uh, stakeholders, being it financial institution, business leaders, and they uh, have brought to Africa all whom they are uh, concerned about development. And I'm sure that Japan uh, can really deliver. Mm -hmm. all its promises to the continent. Yes, uh, also uh, when we talk Japan, we remember uh, the very successful experience uh, regarding education and mm -hmm. higher education, like the Japanese schools that has been also very successful. Uh, I, I'm mm -hmm. sure that Japan mm -hmm. uh, is capable of lending its ex expertise in education to Egypt and to other African uh, countries, and time has come uh, to a country or a civilization like this of Japan to come out of its border and to showcase uh, worldwide and I'm sure that education out of Japan with the Japanese university use mm -hmm. Japanese school is very important same like in Germany uh, I was always saying while I was ambassador to Germany that uh, German education which is due back to the early last century uh, in Egypt uh, is proven to be a success story and uh, we need also to see the Chinese also moving towards the same education is key to Egypt's success and key to Africa development so uh, those countries uh, where they have achieved a lot in terms of education technology advancements uh, are really cool to support Africa because when you educate people you can take them to a different level. Mm -hmm. It is not about technical assistance, it is about building their skills and capacities. Yes, uh, there is also a continued sense of coordination with Africa and even after uh, His Excellency returned from the tour and uh, he received a verbal message from the Guinean president and uh, they coordinated together regarding African issues and also fighting terrorism. So this sense of coordination with uh, African leaders is very important. Guinea in particular mm -hmm. uh, has a history uh, to tell about the relations between Egypt and West Africa. This very important nation uh, has gained uh, uh, independence in 1958 where uh, the late President Gamal Abdel Nasser have supported their independence. It was very difficult because uh, Guinea was the early African nations who voted against the French occupation. So France punished Guinea uh, uh, to uh, compensate their independence. But uh, President Nasser stood uh, firm uh, with his brother at that time, Ahmed Sikitori and they moved together uh, Guinea towards uh, full independence. And uh, this relations uh, brought the President Abdel Fattah Sisi to Guinea last April mm -hmm. uh, when he visited Côte d'Ivoire, if you may recall, Senegal uh, and of course Guinea. Yes. And, he and even, they were signing uh, uh, more than one memoranda of understanding in yeah, different fields. I remember he inaugurated mm -hmm. in the first university of uh, Conakry, Gamal Abdel Nasser University, a statue for uh, President Nasser. Yes. And uh, that is an earthing, actually, our mm -hmm. uh, very important history with uh, West Africa, but in, with Africa in general. But Guinea in particular have a very special place in our heart. Uh, following the independence of the African nations and our fight against uh, really colonialism. And if you may recall, in 5th Ahmed Hishmet Street in Zamalek, all the leaders and all the freedom fighters uh, were uh, visiting this place and taking it as their premises or their embassy till independence. Yes, uh, very remarkable uh, presentation and more also concerning uh, Egypt's sense of coordination. When the president was on his way back, he visited Kuwait and that was also very remarkable, a very remarkable sense of, uh, of uh, coordination. Again, uh, uh, the, the Kuwaiti leadership uh, has proven always to be a, a very wise uh, leadership. It's a window 
uh, where all uh, uh, the Gulf diplomacy can play a role. Uh, Kuwait have carried this responsibility in trying, trying to solve the Qatari crisis, the Iranian escalation of tension in the Gulf. And I'm sure that Kuwait uh, has played this very important role to the benefit of the stability of the Gulf region. But the president was very clear to support not only uh, the Kuwaiti uh, people against terrorism in his declarations, but also to support the uh, Gulf security in general when he stated once again and reiterated his uh, known position that uh, the Gulf security is an integral part of the Egyptian security. And this is very important. Egypt, uh, Tagrid, and Kuwait uh, uh, enjoys really historical ties. Egypt defended Kuwait during Abdel Karim Qasim in the 60s when they threatened the border uh, of Kuwait. And the, of course, it is known uh, the role of the leadership and the government uh, and the people uh, of Egypt to support Kuwait after the dilemma of the invasion. Uh, of yes. its territory mm -hmm. by uh, mm -hmm. Saddam Hussein. Uh, at that time, uh, the Egyptian people before their government has uh, uh, stood uh, firm uh, mm -hmm. to support uh, and host the Kuwaiti people. In Kuwait, uh, there is one million and a half Egyptians uh, live uh, there. And a I'm very sure important visit. Uh, by the president to Kuwait, yes. So when mm -hmm. I said one million and a half uh, mm -hmm. Egyptians lives in Kuwait, it means that Kuwait has also this depth in wisdom because the Egyptian community in Kuwait is the custodian of the language, of the culture, of the religion. Uh, some parts of the Arab world you may see less uh, inclinations yes. towards our culture yes. and language. This but is in a Kuwait, sense of coordination and uh, brotherly and fraternal relations between Egypt and Kuwait. Yes, of course. And uh, that has. Uh, really sent a, a very comfortable message to the Gulf in a time uh, where uh, a lot of uh, interventions and foreign mm -hmm. uh, interventions that causes uh, really uh, mm -hmm. worries in the uh, Gulf region. And I'm sure that uh, the presence uh, of uh, Egypt uh, among this uh, very tense situation in Kuwait sends a message that we are very close and we are keen to find mm -hmm. an Arab-Arab uh, solution. Yes. Remember in uh, the Iraqi Kuwaiti crisis, if we and the Arab uh, countries have managed to find uh, a way forward or a solution to the crisis, uh, we could have avoided uh, many, evaded evaded of many uh, yes, yeah. and mm -hmm. interventions mm -hmm. of uh, 33 uh, foreign countries yes. at that time in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very fruitful meeting in Kuwait and Indeed. Egypt is uh, Egypt is always close to the uh, Arab brothers and uh, even in our soft power and songs we and Ram herself portrayed this by saying Masr Rayeba Egypt is always close. Let's watch. مصر تسلمت الرئاسة الدورية للاتحاد الافريقي لعام 2019 وتتطلع كعادتها دوما للتعبير عن شواغل الشعوب الافريقية الشقيقة الرامية لتحقيق الاستقرار والتقدم ودفع عدد التنمية قدما إذا كنتم ترغبون في تغيير وجه القارة الافريقية فالاتحاد الافريقي كقيادة تستطيع ان تعمل وتدرس بشكل مركزي لمشروع عملاق لبناء بنية اساسية على مستوى القارة انا اتصور ان الامن والاستقرار استثمار اذا لم تستقر هذه القارة والأمن فيها بمعدلة عالية هذا الأمر سينعكس بالسلب علينا كلنا
Welcome back. Egypt really attaches great importance to the efforts of peace and security in Africa, as uh, we've mentioned. And those sense of important bilateral uh, meetings and cooperation is very important. Let's watch part of uh, His Excellency's uh, activities and his vision uh, portraying African interests and African causes in this report. President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi received a verbal message from Guinean President Alpha Conde on bilateral relations, coordination on African issues and efforts to fight terrorism. The message was conveyed to President el-Sisi during a meeting with Guinean Foreign Minister Mamadi Touré. Presidential spokesman Bassam Rodi said that President el-Sisi conveyed his greetings to President Conde, hailing the progress in the two countries' relations after President el-Sisi's visit to Conakry in April. President el-Sisi hailed the convocation of the sixth session of the joint egyptian guinean Committee from September 1 to the 3rd in Cairo and the signing of a number of agreements in the fields of electricity, water resources, maritime transport, environment and antiquities. The president said that Egypt attaches great importance to efforts aiming at maintaining security, peace and stability in the African continent. The meeting also took up Egypt's main priorities for the sustainable development goals in Africa under President Assisi's current chairmanship of the African Union, especially those set for 
in the AU Agenda 2063 on the Programme for Infrastructure Development in Africa. During the meeting with the Guinean Foreign Minister, the Head of State said that these goals were floated during the sessions of the last G20 and the TCAD summits in Japan and the G7 summit in France. They also reviewed the latest developments at the African level. For his part, he recommended Egypt's support to his country in the fields of capacity building and knowledge transfer, voicing his satisfaction about the convocation of the sixth session of the joint egyptian guinean Committee from September 1st to the September 3rd in Cairo, which testifies to both countries' willingness to push cooperation forward at various levels. افريقيا ثارت وافريقيا تحررت افريقيا ناضلت وافريقيا ضحت افريقيا اليوم نتيجة للثورة ونتيجة للنضال ونتيجة للتضحية مستقلة افريقيا الان تستقل الشرق إلى أقصى الغرب ومن أقصى الشمال إلى أقصى الجنوب وملحمة مشرفة من النضال المشترك دشنها الآباء المؤسسون عبد الناصر ونكرومة وسكتوري وبين بيلا وعيل سلاسي وبوديبوكيتا وصولا لمندلة فانتماء مصر لأفريقيا ليس فقط لاعتبارات التاريخ والجغرافيا Yes, uh, Egypt will always be the heart of Africa. Egypt belongs to Africa, as the president uh, said. Uh, the sense of summit diplomacy has been very important. This sense of activity and uh, this sense of uh, coordination among leaders, meetings, very rich meetings, uh, definitely in the interests of the whole continent. Of course, summit diplomacy, as you said, Taghrib, is mm -hmm. always very important. This is a continent of elderly, elderly people. This is the continent of the chief this is the continent of wisdom so uh, the summit diplomacy is always very important as it uh, uh, reach out to the others and to make uh, I think uh, all our issues and problems and challenges met with the required decision and I'm sure President Abdel Fattah Sisi has proven since he, he, he assumed power in 2014 that his fidel is very sincere in his drive towards Africa. And the whole country now is moving in the media, in the economy, mm -hmm. uh, in the political, uh, in the military, in the security towards Africa. And this is actually uh, what a, a country like Egypt has to do. It has to move in all fronts to support Africa, not as I said, because because of uh, the presidency of the African Union 2019, but because, as the president said, not only because of history and because of geography, I think it is because of the belief uh, in the Africa, belonging. the belonging mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the trust in a future to come where this continent will, will, will uh, take the, its rightful uh, role in the world community. We have to push towards uh, more partnership with uh, different initiatives, being it the Chinese, the Indian, the Western, uh, different initiatives, and we have to seek partnership that will help the continent through its economic challenges as well as its security challenges. Egypt is part of this African drive and I think is a very sincere uh, driver indeed to uh, take Africa to the right shore. Yes, and uh, from Africa and talking Africa, also a sense of coordination with world leaders we've seen were on the sidelines uh, with President Trump, also a sense of coordination with Russia, with President Putin, and more to come. 
Of course, uh, next month in October, uh, President Putin invited uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi to lead together the uh, first uh, Russian-African summit. As mm -hmm. you see, there is too many initiatives towards the continent, and we always talk about uh, the importance of partnership in coordination with African views. Uh, not to lead and to take decisions in African issues without really consulting Africa. And as I said, Africa is always in need to any, to, to, to any support from all partners. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have a preference. Uh, we have a partnership with Japan, with China, with India, with the United States, with Europe, and we are open uh, to all who are lending support to African development. And I think Russia has always been uh, a great friend to Africa and a support to African development, and I'm sure that the outcome of the Africa-Russian uh, summit will be very successful. But again, in the uh, UN General Assembly 74th uh, uh, meetings, uh, there is an opportunity to talk more about African challenges and opportunities, to talk more to world leaders where 192 uh, leaders will be present in this very important assembly. This is what they call it the uh, General Assembly of the World Community, where mm -hmm. we can talk about our hopes and dreams, our challenges, and talk to world leaders about partnership. And I'm sure the speech of the president uh, uh, will uh, come to encompass and to complete the picture and talk about Africa. Uh, hopes, Africa achievement, Africa challenges, and the long way Egypt also has carried uh, through uh, during the few years uh, or the year even uh, since the 73rd uh, session to the 74th session, Egyptian economy uh, has uh, proven yes. to be a success story mm -hmm. and I'm sure will bring this success story to the world uh, platform and we'll talk again about the challenge of uh, terrorism and the challenge of illegal immigration and how important that we have all yes. together work against terrorism and countries that are supporting and financing and logistically transporting uh, the elements yeah. that is part of this phenomena. But he will put a stress on the economic uh, development and the uh, sustainable development as yes, it is fairly. thematic, mm -hmm. uh, one of the five pillars of uh, the 74th session of yeah. the General Assembly. Very important uh, upcoming meeting and uh, uh, definitely it's also going to yield its fruits and uh, we'll be talking more about results. I thank you very much, Excellency thank Ambassador you. Dr. Mohamed Hagezi, former assistant to the Foreign Minister, uh, for uh, bringing this valuable information uh, on the debate tonight. Thank you so much for My coming. My pleasure, Tari. Thank you very much. And I thank you, dear viewers, for joining us. We discussed more about uh, Egypt's chairmanship of the African Union and milestones in the Egyptian uh, leadership towards uh, belonging to Africa. I'm Tahrid Hussein. Many thanks for watching.